Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Activities for People Living at Home with Dementia. My name is Gail Snyder. I'm the Executive Director for Dementia Friendly Fort Worth. We proudly offer this program with funding from the Area Agency on Aging and United Way of Tarrant County. These programs are recorded and are made available for future use through a YouTube channel. And today we are talking about holiday traditions. And you all will have an opportunity to share with us what you do to celebrate during this season. Okay. So do I have a volunteer who would like to go first? Okay. I'll, you I'll mentioned. Okay. Um, so our current traditions are that uh, um, we, uh, we usually, with the Alzheimer's Association, we had at least two Christmas parties we'd go to. Um, and, uh, and then we had, we should, sometimes we'd meet with our friends to uh, have a, a holiday dinner um, out. But on Christmas Day, and then Christmas, Christmas Eve, uh, Meyer and I stay up late, um, as late as we can, see if we, see if we can see Santa Claus. And uh, then uh, Christmas morning, uh, about mid-morning, we open up the, the presents. So and this then, year you don't have to stay up to wait for Santa Claus because you already saw him. Oh yeah, already Santa's Santa. already here. Yeah, yeah, Santa yeah, yeah, right. came. Yeah, yeah. Early arrival. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And what kind of food do you usually have? Prime rib. Prime rib. Yeah. And what goes with that? Usually twice baked potatoes. Hmm. And um maybe green beans of some sort and some some fluffy salad some fluffy kind of salad <laughs> uh i think uh some kind of grilled asparagus or bacon wrapped asparagus would be really good with that yeah it would be great if, if i liked it yeah i like that <laughs> one of us likes it one of us does not <laughs> somehow i had a feeling you were going to say that <laughs> You don't like Brussels sprouts either, do you? No, no, no he no, does no, not. No. <laughs> I, can, I don't I like Brussels sprouts, but I do like asparagus. Yeah. Okay. I like uh, I like broccoli raw. I like raw broccoli, and I, I can eat it cooked sometimes. But uh, you have to have cheese on it if it's cooked. No, no, I can eat it raw. No, I, no, I can no, eat it in no. Chinese food too. I don't usually, but I could. I was gonna say I, <laughs> I've never seen you eat it in there. <laughs> All right. Well, Martha? Remind me how to do a screen share. Uh, down at the bottom, the green button in the middle that says share screen. Uh-huh. Now, okay. how do I get my pictures up? And then you choose, you have to have those pictures up already. Oh. <laughs> that was a catch. Open the There's file where the pictures are at first. <laughs> taught me this and I don't remember. So make the screen with the pictures of us on it, minimize it so that it's only taking up half of your screen. Okay. Then open the folder that has the pictures in it. My hands are shaky today. Pictures. Nope. Y'all are going to see some fun things today. That's not it. <laughs> you get to see my whole screen, don't you? Yep. Yep. That's not nope. it. Oops. Nope. Can we see your screen? Um, is it those JPEG files down below the one that says Christmas tree and fireplace? Man, what did I just do? Bye. <laughs> <laughs> So, so right now I've got something that says that I'm, my screen is sharing. Okay, you, you, you screen. Okay, okay, got it. I'm just going to do this the hard way. Okay, so Don, we're seeing your screen now? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, so what are you going to show us? What's that? I said, what are you going to show us? Oh, um, 
Um, you help me figure it out. Um, well, I, I guess I, I was just doing around stuff, following the instructions. <laughs> <laughs> you, you had those pictures I sent you. Uh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Just a second. Myra sent me some pictures uh, yesterday. I have to. Uh, Martha, how's yours going? I'm going to do it the old fashioned way. Okay. <laughs> I took some, you were asking about what, what I do to celebrate the holidays. And since I'm Jewish, Hanukkah's coming up and tonight is the first night. Mm -hmm. So I took some pictures of the things that I have as far as decor for Hanukkah. Oh, hey, wait, don't go away. Don't, don't go away. <laughs> okay. Coming right back. I can, I can sit here and be real cute. <laughs> That's because Santa's here. We're that's all behaving. Right. Yeah. I'll be oh. You know, that's, that's a great, when you're leaning into the camera, Steve, that's yes. a great Santa Claus shot. That is. Yeah, yeah. it is. A really oh, great God. Santa Claus shot. You know, a lot, of, a lot of the Santas this year are either during virtual or like in the malls are actually behind a plexiglass. Yes. The mm -hmm. kids can't sit in their laps this year. Right. But virtually they can do it because virtually they can take and mix, mix up two pictures together. Right. Oh, okay. You can sit on the lap. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. That's a house divided. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. I like it. It is. It is. Uh, Very nice. Yes. Um, our seven lies, Jewish. And oh, cool. is, I used to work at Temple Emanuel for two rabbis. One was Rabbi Mintz. Well, guess where Rabbi Mintz is from? He's from Walnut Hill, California. Guess where my, our son-in-law's parents live? Two oh, blocks no. away from Rabbi oh. Mintz in California at, at, in that same subdivision. What are the odds of that? Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. So, um, she was always kind of Where afraid. does he attend the temple? Who, Joel? He, he lives out in California. Yeah, your son-in-law, where does he? He doesn't. Ah, okay. <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, you know, we, I used to work at Temple Emanuel for, you know, Rabbi Mintz and Rabbi Kaiserman. So, uh, I mean, we just, everybody fit together. <laughs> I yeah. found this and I couldn't resist it, so. I got one for uh, Joel's mom. I can mom. see why. Huh? You what? I can see why you couldn't resist it. Oh, yeah. it was perfect. You know, so happy Hanukkah. <laughs> um, yep, happy Hanukkah. Yep. All right, so Martha, you were about to show us some of your decor. Some of my pictures, oh. yes. Uh, one of the big things for Hanukkah is the menorah. Right. Uh, the menorah uh, symbolizes the, there was a miracle in which uh, there was only one night's worth of oil left for the lamp. And they lit the lamp and it lasted eight days. Wow. And that's why we have <clears throat> Hanukkahs at this point. And these are yeah. from my, uh, it's cash register in the background, but you can sort of see there are two candles. There's two candles, yes. two uh -huh. blue candles. Yes, and there's a Star of David as the base. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tonight oh, I see that. The, tonight will be the first night, and I will light those candles, and they burn down completely. You don't use them to read by or to for warmth or for work. They're only for beauty. So the second night, you put in the helper candle and then two candles, and you use the helper candle to light the other two and then put it back in, and all three of them burn down. Okay. And okay. As, you, as you light the candles, you say a blessing for uh, thanking God for being God and for bringing us to this season. Yeah. One of my girlfriends found this cute pillow. It says, Happy Hanukkah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's cute. That's about two feet square. Yeah. And I'm yeah. sorry, these are so, my hands are shaky, so you can't see, can't see too well. A friend of mine gave me this just yesterday. This is oh yes, that's this is, beautiful. Uh, an LED. Uh huh. 
so that I plugged it into the computer and it gives me juice and you can touch the buttons and light up the appropriate number of candles. Oh, okay. Wow. That's, that's no, lovely. Yeah, so for the places like my apartment that don't let me burn candles, right. I, yeah. I could use that. Now outside of my apartment, I showed y'all that long piece of, of Christmas needlepoint the other day. Yes. I have that outside in my hallway, and maybe you can see this one is a tree of life and has two candles uh, in it. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. The helper candle is in the middle, and then the other, there are four on the left and four on the right. Okay. So that one is outside, and I made a paper chain, which you can see it's blue and turquoise. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. I yeah. made the paper chain, and it's a, uh, it's, um, See if I have, yes, I have a larger picture of that. Okay, see yeah, it, I see yes. it, yeah. The paper yeah. Yeah. And then the Christmas is behind it. So I'm kind of like the t-shirt in that I mix everything. <laughs> so tell us what the white candle symbolizes. Um, white and blue and silver are traditional Jewish colors. Mm -hmm. um, I've used uh, multicolored candles. Uh, blue is just the default color kind of like red and green. Uh -huh. And then there are some, uh, this happens to be a joke on the web. Is that written backwards? No, no. Oh. So they're all talking about, uh, I'm too close together. And if you notice the candles are wearing masks. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. And they're talking about being too close together and how far apart are we and Somebody posted that on Facebook, and I thought that was really cool. And if you'll wait just a second, I have a sweatshirt, too. Come on, sugar. What I think is nice is when, when we've got um, Joel and the family now, we can incorporate and, and celebrate the Jewish holidays as well as all the Christian holidays. So we've, we've got it. You got the month of December covered, huh? Yep, we got it covered. We got it covered. Well, there's a lot of cultural um, background to both of them. There's a lot of basis for both of them because oh, yeah. of the, you know, Christianity came out of the Jewish culture. Sure did. Sure did. And so there's, there's a lot of similarities to it. A lot more than sometimes yeah. people that get a two poles on each side don't realize that the, you have to have both, you know. Um, I had some friends basically, you know, they said, oh, we don't need the Old Testament because we're in the New Testament. I said, no, you need the Old Testament to understand the New Testament. To you know where we can. Because came. you, yeah, there you go, yes. Very nice. Yes. yes. And it even fits me. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. And oh. Allah is a traditional Friday night bread that we make for mm -hmm. uh, every hey, you... Sabbath. Yeah. I don't make bread anymore, but I used to. Can you hold that back up so I can take a picture of it and send it to um... your son-in-law? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're so welcome. I'm going to send it to his mom, too. And then there's this little thing that I put around a candle. So the candle goes through the middle. I may have yeah. shown this to you before. Yeah. Yes. And blue and white, silver. And that's all the pictures I took. <laughs> uh, traditional yeah. foods are uh, latkes, L-A-T-K-E. Oh, it's they're so good. Fried potatoes. See, yep. even the bird says yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, donuts. <laughs> Because of the miracle of the oil, everything that we make at Hanukkah is fried in oil. Mm. There you go. Yes. Interesting. <laughs> and the good thing, too, is the calories don't count because it's mm. Hanukkah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Now, I grew up Southern Baptist and Presbyterian, so I came to Judaism late. So somewhere but in all of the stashes of things, I still have uh, needlepoint um, mm -hmm. Santa Claus stockings that I made that I will never throw away. Right, yeah. 
Yeah. Thank you for letting me share. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank yeah, you. Thank oh, you. Wow. beautiful. Oh. Beautiful. Those well, let me share, since yeah. I'm going to have to leave here very quickly. Um, one of our traditions, when our kids were younger, I was a chaplain at MD Anderson Cancer Center. And being a new chaplain, I was also always on tap for the holidays. I had to work the Christmas and I had to work Thanksgiving. And so uh, the first year I was there, I worked actually through the night into Christmas Day. And my wife brought the girls up to the hospital. So we had Christmas dinner at the cafeteria. And then I took them around to the, to, to the wards that I worked with. Uh, not so much to meet the patients, but to meet the workers. Oh yeah, the workers, patients get a lot of, lot of attention during Christmas season, uh, in the hospitals, but the workers don't get. To my girls, I gave my girls candy canes, and they gave it out to each of the workers, the nurses and the doctors, and the, you know, all the people in the cafeteria. In fact, in the cafeteria, um, we order lunch and. Um, the guy that was serving there, my youngest daughter, handed him a candy cane and says, Merry Christmas, and he started breaking out in tears. And he said, you know, my kids got up this morning. All they want to know is, what did you get me, Dad? What did you get me, Dad? And you just brought a whole joy to my life, you know, that there's more to it. And so uh, we kept that up for many years. Uh, when we went to Thailand, the first couple of years, we did the same thing. We went out to the markets, and we'd you know, talk to tea people and things like that. And that kind of changed, of course, with the Christmas programs in Thailand. Thailand, in Thailand, the Christmas season is from mid-December to mid-January, okay? Every village has a program oh, wow. <laughs> that you have a church in. So you've got to do all of those programs. So that kind of took care of that. Um, now we don't really do, you know, a lot. Um, we have no standard food for Christmas, you know, it's whatever we want to eat, you know. We did that in Thailand because, you know, we sometimes have chicken dumplings and sometimes have soup and, you know, nothing standard because you could really buy a turkey there. Uh, it was too expensive. Um, so it's just kind of there. We just spend time together. Growing up, we always open gifts in the, at Christmas Eve. Uh, but as we you know, as you learn, when you get married, you have to work together. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. And so um, Sue's family always did theirs on Christmas Day, and it was a big deal. Oh, so I said, okay, you know. And uh, uh, we have a picture of our young, oldest daughter, Rebecca, who was born on December 22nd, laying on the floor of Christmas morning with my mother and my mother-in-law crouched on the floor around her. Oh my gosh. Yeah. In the middle of all the, she was sleeping in the middle of all of the, you know, ripping up pleasant presents and everything. <laughs> so anyway, that's kind of our time. You know, this year is a little different because we won't be with the grandkids, but we're doing as best we can to be with them. We did charades with them last Sunday, Christmas charades. That was kind of fun. Um, so we'll do the best, you know. We'll do did FaceTime. They raise, did they have to do something related to Christmas? Yeah, it was all related to Christmas, the okay. trades, okay? And uh, some of them were pretty comical, you know, the way they <laughs> try to do it. Um, I can imagine. Yeah, you know, their, their creativity was very different than ours sometimes. And uh, I think we got most of them except for a couple of them that they just, you know, I just couldn't, we could just make heads or tails of what they're doing. But anyway, that's all right. You but know. you were making your brain work. That's right. And it, it lasted for about five minutes and then they were off on their own, you know, type of thing. <laughs> it's, it's like kids, you know, they have a very limited, uh, short <coughs> attention span. And so uh, it was about five. We were together probably about 15 minutes, but about only about five of those in charades. And then they decided they wanted to do other things. And so anyway, that's that's Christmas. Yeah. This year we're just home by ourselves and we'll FaceTime with both sides, both of the kids. And uh, I'll, of course I'll call my brothers. 
I uh, can't call my mom anymore. I would. I wish okay. I could. Where do your yep. brothers live? They both live in North Dakota. North Dakota. Yep. And uh, they uh, don't have um, iPhones, so I can't do the FaceTime. Mm. You know? And both of them are very, it, it, it's amazing because my brother used to work for AT&T, but both of them are very, you know, they don't set up their, their um, uh, voicemail. They don't do anything. It's just kind of like, you know, you catch them when you catch them. Type of thing. Some people like it that way. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, like I said, my older brother worked for AT&T for many years. But so did my decided not to, you know, uh, he was, he was, he ended up, well, for many years, he was the switchboard repairman for North Dakota, for old North Dakota. And so he had to be there always on New Year's, New Year's Eve and day when they did the change the New Year to make sure everything changed over correctly. Mm -hmm. so we always had to work that day. Um, and then when they finally closed out North Dakota and combined it all with Minnesota, he moved to Minnesota and uh, started doing fiber optics. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Laying fiber optics. So he went back into the field. But he started out as a lineman um, just out of college. Then he got drafted. And when he came back, they had a job for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, so he stayed with them for years and years and years so anyway okay i'm done hey okay, my, husband, to... my husband's whole career was with at&t and i need to go okay all right bye, bye. Thank bye. You for it. Ho, ho. Oh. hope to see you tomorrow, see you tomorrow. okay bye-bye bye have a good day have bye. fun ho 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 <laughs> hello nancy Sorry, right, walk by Somebody walked by. Yeah, there she oh, is. Hi, Good Nancy. morning, Nancy. Morning. How are you today, Nancy? Mm -hmm. Not too good. Not too good. good. I'm glad you're here. I'm feeling really great, thanks. Good, good. Well, we're glad you're here. It's always good to see you, Nancy. Good to see you, Nancy. Thank you. So Paulette, would you like to share something about um, your family um, holiday traditions? And it can be about your childhood or it can be about how you normally celebrate. Well, uh, normally we share Christmas with um, our daughter, Heather, who lives here. No, I'm sorry, we do a Christmas in California with the other daughter and we do Thanksgiving here with Heather, but all that's changed. So I don't know what we're gonna do this year, but normally we just kinda, I fixed sour broughton for Christmas dinner. And I've done that, um, oh, <laughs> forever it seems. And that's a good old German dish. I, I started making it for my father many, 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 many years ago. So it's, roast beef and you soak it in sauce and all that good stuff and everybody liked it but I don't know that I'll go through all that trouble this year just for the two of us or just say ah wait till next year <laughs> if we're around I'll do it if I can remember <laughs> so what's your so, um, what's your favorite memory from your childhood oh I was waiting for Santa Claus to come <laughs> waiting for Santa Claus to come yes yeah um yeah, it was always kind of interesting because uh, I'm, I'm the only child. So it was kind of, no, there wasn't anybody to share anything with, but I mean, it was just kind of fun. And I know my mother would threaten with me, you better behave because Santa Claus is watching you. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so that's kind of, I remember putting up the Christmas tree and, you know, Things like that. My, mo most of my memories, though, I, for some reason, are just, you know, after I grew up, got married, and had two kids of my own, and played Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So I was Mrs. Claus. <laughs> That's pretty well, awesome. Nancy, how about you? Can you share with us something that your family does to celebrate the holidays? Not really, you know. What about when you were a child? Well, we, uh, we sometimes had a tree. Yeah. And then presents as I got older. But my mother was Jehovah Witness, so uh, we didn't really celebrate that much. Okay. Did you have any special celebrations um, with the Jehovah Witness faith that you did? Huh? I said, did you have any special things that you celebrated during this time of year as a Jehovah Witness? No, we didn't. We I didn't. don't know now. Because I realized, I think, that, that it wasn't good for the kids. Right, right. But celebrations now, because we're having one. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I mean, I, as I got older, I got the tree and decorated it. My mother never said anything. Yeah. For six children, younger than I was. So, so are you the oldest? That was a brave thing for you to do. Yeah. <laughs> I know your brothers and sisters appreciated that. All of them. All of them, yeah. Were birthdays a big deal? What? Birthdays. Oh, yeah, they don't celebrate birthdays either, but my mother did. So I don't know, she wasn't totally Jehovah Witness because we sort of live in an isolated area, so she didn't have that much contact. Mm -hmm. We lived in a area between Ukiah and Fort Bragg up north. That's where I was raised. Oh my. <laughs> Were there any traditional things in town like uh, festivals, um, parades, like the Macy's Parade or a local uh, some people have the squash blossom festival and some people have a pumpkin festival. Did any of that go on in your area? No, my childhood. <laughs> no. It's like all oh, that stuff goes on now. So Well does does your daughter have a big tree up at the house? Yes. Yes. I don't want to talk anymore now. Okay. All right. Well, Myra, would you like to share something? Um, I was just sitting here trying. I, I have several very clear memories, but when I started kindergarten, if there was a disease, a sneeze within the state of Kansas, I caught it. So I spent most of kinder, and after that, I was, I'm, you know, besides chicken pox, I've not been ill, but it, I was Christmas Eve, it was cent central Kansas, so it was cold, and um, it was snowing, and Doc Moore was coming by to look at me, because it's a small town, and the doctor comes to the house, yes. and he came by the house, and I think he gave me a shot. I don't, I, that part I don't remember. But he, he said, well, do you want to open this present? And I thought it was from him. A and I said, well, you know, I looked to, to mom and she said, well, go, you know, go ahead. And my mother given it to him to give to me. And it was walk a walkie talkie, <coughs> which is something I'd ask for to play with with my friends. So he left, and all of a sudden, Santa called on my walkie-talkie. <laughs> and I, it's, it's just so vivid that I could still hear what Santa was saying, not thinking at the time that it was Doc Moore out and outside, but th that was, and I was laying on the sofa, and Mother covered me up with a down blanket and white Christmas was on. Oh. It's it's very vivid in my mind. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Sweet. 
Yes. I love it. Thank you. That, that's, that's a very sweet memory. Yes, it is. I'm old enough to remember when Doc's made house <laughs> calls too. Oh yeah, I, I, got, I, got, I, was, I was the, the focus of, of a lot of house calls. I had very, very poor uh, lungs. I would uh, um, get pneumonia or um, get uh, some sort of uh, congestion. And uh, I remember one winter, I don't know what, day, what, what, what part of the winter it was, but he, he drove all the way out from his office in Decatur, Illinois, about uh, 15 miles in ice and snow to give me a shot. Wow. But uh, that's, all I, that's what I remember about uh, doctors uh, uh, visiting. They probably saved your life. You probably did, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. As, as this, this problem is something I've, I, I still have, uh, uh, getting congested and uh, coughing for weeks at a time. Oh my. Um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, we had, uh, you know, the, the only other thing I can remember about Christmas is that my family had um, a different kind of Christmas tree than anybody else I saw. It was a, like a, a, some kind of fir tree. And it made, that means it was a, had a, a, a trunk that went up the middle and had branches that came out that were very sparsely, uh, 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 had very sparse needles on them. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, we just decorate it and uh, we'd throw lots of tinsel on it um, and set, put the lights on it. Myra's trees, on the other hand, have, were basically what I remember is the Phlox Christmas trees. Um, later on. Later on, yeah. And uh, they were beautiful too. Did anybody ever have one of those aluminum Christmas trees? No. Someone that did. My great grandmother had one at the farm, and she had one of those things underneath it that had lights that turned. So yeah. it would make it turn different colors. Mm -hmm. Oh, how pretty. That must have been. And I just remember that that was always the Christmas tree she had in the living room when I was a kid. Yeah, I, I remember a few of my, a few, I had a couple of relatives that had the aluminum Christmas trees also. Yeah. It's all very space age back then. Yeah. <laughs> always, I thought that the people who had those were rich. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my great, great grandmother was not rich, but for some reason she had that aluminum, always had that aluminum tree. We all had, but, Kid, we always had an artificial tree, mm -hmm. but since I've been married, we've always had a live tree. Okay. Paulette? Yeah, um, sometime if we have time before Christmas, I wrote a story about a Christmas tree, so I'd be happy to share it sometime when we... All right, well, bring it with you so you'll have it. Okay. I have it. So anyway. Do you have it today? Yes. All right, well, let's hear it. Oh, okay. Well, I don't want to take time away from okay. anybody. Okay. It's oh. fine. We'd love to hear it. This okay, is it's about a little fir tree. Seeds are small. At least most seeds are. This seed was very small. Some might say even tiny. It had a lot of potential. A florist found it one day uh, in the forest with some other seeds nearby. The florist decided to gather the seeds and plant them in the hopes that they would grow. She planted each seed in its very own flower pot. Several weeks went by and suddenly, one by one, tiny little green spots began to emerge in the pots. The little seeds grew and became small trees. It was Christmas and the little fir trees were just the right size to be decorated. So the florist decided she would decorate each little tree with lights and ornaments that would look so beautiful on a table or a mantle by a fireplace. The little trees were so excited, their branches quivered with delight as each decoration was placed in its branches. Customers loved the little fir trees and bought them all. The little trees were thrilled to help decorate for Christmas and they all went to a different place. It was a lot of work for one little tree, standing tall with limbs outstretched, holding lights and ornaments in place. 
And then one day, the little tree's owner noticed that the little fir tree was drooping and looked very tired. So she took it outside and planted it. And it was right between two tall pecan trees. The little tree fell asleep. Its branches drooped and turned brown. And the little fir tree slept on and on and on and on. The pecan tree stood guard over the little fir tree. The two pecan trees joined their roots together to help the little tree sleep and grow strong. Days went by, weeks went by, the seasons changed and the years passed. The pecan tree supported the little fir tree and gave it strength. And then one magical spring day, the little fir tree began to awaken. Its roots stirred and began to feed its branches with the food the pecan trees had provided. The tiny fir tree that looked like a small brown branch began to turn greener and greener and grow taller and taller. Soon the little fir tree uh, Oh, I'm sorry, the little fir tree is now big and tall and green. And how it loves the pecan trees for feeding it and enabling it to grow. To this day, the little pine tree continues to grow and shows its love to the pecan trees by wrapping its arms around one and entangling its roots with the other. And so they live and love together forever. That's nice. That's lovely. Very nice, Paulette. That needs to be a book. <laughs> and that needs to be a children's book. And no, I wrote it. Paulette. Oh, it needs to be a, oh, yeah. Oh, well, thank you. And is that about the tree that you bought for when your mom was still alive and you planted it? Yes. It didn't grow and then finally it started to grow? Yeah, that, that's the background for this one. Yeah. Very nice. Thank you so much for sharing. Oh, thank you for letting me and thank you for hanging in there with me while I read the whole thing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you all have a super Merry Christmas. And I, I agree with Martha that that should be turned into a children's Christmas book. I agree too. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, okay. I wish I knew how to get that done. I'll do it in a minute. So, so Gail. Um, and and Don could do the illustrations. Oh right, oh, yeah, yes. yeah. There you go. Hey, we got a got a partnership. I'll paint going. it, yeah. I'll, I'll paint it, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good to me. And and, and you have to paint the different um, scenarios of the tree. Yep. Yes. I, I, oh. I see. I see how that works. Yeah. Yep. We. Yep. That would be really cool. Oh, that would be so fun and so wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Let's get started on that. All right. Okay. <laughs> I'll have to do some more brainstorming on that one. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, Gail, you mentioned you have a live Christmas tree. Do you plant it in the yard or is it just a cut down um, tree? That you... It's a real tree, but it's been cut down. Okay. So Got we it. Go, when our kids were little, we used to find a Christmas tree farm. Yeah. And actually go to the farm and pick out the tree and cut the tree down. Hmm. And that all started the first Christmas that um, after my son was born, we lived near a big um, open field um, near Springfield, in Springfield, Missouri. And we went out into the field. Actually, my husband went first and scouted out where he thought we could find a Christmas tree. And so it was cold and snowy. And so then he came back to the house and we bundled the baby up in his snowsuit. And he and my husband went out to cut the tree. And I think he actually, and I think I actually went too. We don't have any pictures from out in the field, but I can still vividly remember trudging out there through the snow to go see the tree that they had picked out. And so I held the baby while he cut the tree and then we drug it back to the house and it was so big when we got it back to the house that we had to cut the top off of it because it was too small yep. to stand in the living room. Yeah. And it was just a scrub cedar tree. Yeah. Um, but it was big. And mm. 
that was that being the first year um, that we had the baby, we announced to both sides of the family that starting that year, we would be at home on Christmas Eve and anybody who wanted to come was welcome to be there, but we would be at home on Christmas Eve. Yay. Good. And we main, maintained that tradition all through our kids growing up. The first time we did not have Christmas at our house on Christmas Eve was after both of our kids graduated from college and they were sharing a house and we had Christmas Eve at their house. Okay. And um, that was very hard for me to give that up. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. it was something that had always been. But there was one time when the kids were probably in middle school or high school and we had our big Christmas and we do everything on Christmas Eve. So I cook all day in the kitchen and we have a big meal, early, usually early afternoon. And then at, when it starts to get dusk, the kids always had to go lay down to wait for Santa. But Santa only did the stockings at our house. Mm -hmm. And so we would wake the kids up and tell them that Santa Claus had come and they would open their stockings. And then everybody was there and usually most of the time, my parents and a lot of times, especially when the kids were older, my grandmother was there. And we would all sit around and read the Christmas story from the book of Luke. Mm -hmm. And somebody would say a prayer. And then we would go around the room and everybody would tell something special that they were thankful for. And mm -hmm. lots of times there would be tears. And then we would proceed to start opening the presents and it wasn't a free-for-all like some places are one gift at a time and so whoever was playing santa claus would give a gift and everybody had to wait until they finished opening their gift yeah. before they could start to open the next gift oh how wonderful that's and nice so, so did you do all this on christmas eve on christmas eve yeah and we always had snacky foods. I used to like to make punch mm -hmm. and Christmas cookies. I have this big glass tray that's about this big. Oh, wow. And um, I fill it with all kinds of Christmas cookies and candies. And my favorite part of opening the gifts is sitting around opening the gifts and eating a Christmas cookie. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's nice. That's nice. And if it's a Christmas cookie, the calories don't count. That's the cookie's gift to you. And then one time when our kids were in, I think, early high school, we really wanted to go to Missouri where my husband's family was because his older sister and her husband would, were going to be there for Christmas. They always came on Christmas Eve because that's when his parents had Christmas. And they would stay until after breakfast on Christmas morning, and then they would leave to go to the other side of the family. So we decided if we left after we were done with our Christmas and drove all night, we could get to Missouri in time to have breakfast with his sister and brother-in-law before they left to go back to Chicago. Oh, very good. And so that's what we did. So after we opened the presents, we cleaned everything up and we had our suitcases packed and we jumped in the car and we drove all night. And in the wee hours of the morning when the sun was about to come up, we were at that point where we were getting close to being there, but very tired. And I was driving too fast and I got pulled over by a policeman. <laughs> And he was nice enough to only give me a warning, but he said, that's, please slow down so that you arrive where you're going safely. That's good. So for the longest time, everything, every time we would drive through that, <laughs> area, the family would remind me that that was where I almost got a ticket on Christmas Day. <laughs> oh, the memories. Oh, the memories. Almost works sometimes. Eh, sometimes it doesn't, but that time it worked real well. <laughs> But my favorite part is just being with family. Yeah. Every, all of my sisters and my grandma and my mom being in the kitchen, everybody working on whatever they were making for the meal and groups of kids 
being off playing somewhere in another room and all the guys watching football or a John Wayne movie. Mm -hmm. And that's my favorite part. And so on Christmas day now, it's usually just me and my husband and our son and Christmas day is a pretty quiet day. We usually sleep a little bit later, maybe have a late breakfast and play games or watch movies because we've already oh, done nice. all yeah. of our busy festivity. And, and so then Christmas day is kind of a slower paced, just enjoy the day. So, but my yeah. grandmother, my grandmother was with us a lot for Christmas in the later years. And that's what I miss the most too, because she would sit in the kitchen and she would, peel the potatoes or wash the dishes or help my daughter make a quadruple batch of fudge by accident. <laughs> sure, it was an accident, sure. Some accident. We got too much of one ingredient in the recipe and so we had to add enough ingredients <laughs> to oh. make whatever Wow, oh, what a excuse. Oh, a batch of fudge. <laughs> You couldn't ruin it. Right. Oh. You couldn't waste the ingredients either. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, no. Mm -mm. Wouldn't let her do that. Wait, Gail, you were talking about your your Christmas tree. Don and I got married between our sophomore and junior college years. Uh -huh. At nineteen. At nineteen, yeah. At nineteen. So we had about 18 cents to rub together. <laughs> um, I, I passed the state, the, can, the state of Kansas teaching certificate. So I was teaching all day and then going to college at night. Don was going to college during the day and he was working at night. So we, we didn't even see each other, but it made us stronger. But we went to get a Christmas tree and we were driving a little bitty VW and it, I think it was the 24th if not the 23rd it was way late and I guess the guy took pity on us and he helped us pick out this tree and wrapped it up and put it on the top of the VW and we were living in of course a mobile home trailer <laughs> yeah, yep. good old trailer and in in Manhattan, Kansas. Well, when we got it in, it filled the whole room. <laughs> so we had to turn the, the, the sofa sideways so you'd open the front door to come in and you'd have to step over the back of the sofa to get into the trailer because it was so big. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> but those are the memories you love. Yes, that's yes, exactly right. Yes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. Well, this has been a lot of fun, everyone. Yes, it has. Yes. Oh, it Thank has you been. So much. Oh, what, what a wonderful Christmas present you gave us, Gail. Yes, yeah. and Santa Claus even joined us. That's, That's right. And That's right. right. That. Nancy, Miss Santa Claus. <laughs> yeah, Nancy, Steve came as Santa Claus at the early part of the program just before you got here. Yeah. yeah. It looked good. It did look good. It's been a lot of fun, but let me share with you tomorrow's session. All right, can you all see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. But it says Wednesday, Thursday, Tuesday, oh, Monday. The wrong way. Hold on. How did I do that? I'm so glad I'm not the only one that's, that has challenges. I thought I had it on the right screen. I, I think I picked the wrong um, share file. Whoop, it did it again. Gail, I'm gonna send you a, the screenshot of Santa so you can send it to Nancy. Okay. There you go. Yeah, could you see it? Briefly. <laughs> It flew by. There Texas we go. Wind. Friday the 11th. Is it big? No. Yes. 
Texas Winds, musical outreach. Oh, a guitar player tomorrow. There yeah. you go. Yes. Graham Jones, vocalist and guitarist, and he's been with us before. So that will be our session to end off the week, and I'm sure he'll bring some Christmas tunes. Good. Oh, yay. That'd be nice. I hope so. That's right. <laughs>